Hello and welcome to Queers and Soaps. I'm Eric, joined once again by Erin. That girl. Um, we're covering some more Ryan's Hope for you this week. Um, episodes 39 to 46. Tommy roll the credits and we'll chat about it. So um, before we start, I want to thank our Patreon subscribers. And if you don't subscribe, please do. We're doing all kinds of episode watches. We watch 90210, Port Charles. What else? Spider games. Derek uh, and I do speculations on what's coming up on General Hospital. So we talk about go. rumors, castings. That's all on Patreon. Mm-hmm. Hopefully we'll bring you some Bold and the Beautiful soon. I'm working on that. And um, so anyway, yes, thank you. And thank you, watchers. And now let's get into Ryan's Hope. Um, so episode 39, um, Bucky fills Pat in on his date with Faith, of course, you know. Faith is definitely autistic, for sure. There's a lot, there's something going on with Faith. Either she's autistic and asexual, or she's asexual, (laughs) but she just comes off as someone who is, uh, like, not sex repulsed. Well, maybe a little sex repulsed because she seems to panic anytime something yeah. becomes romantic. And she even uh, she, says something along the lines of asexuality. At one she point. did. She I did, like, oh. and they just ignored it. So our little asexual I'm, queen faith is still trying to be understood by these people. I'm surprised they went through with that on uh, 1975. You know, that's <laughs> impressive. It's nice to see ace representation, actually. <laughs> Um, he actually plans on avoiding her. He's like, I just gonna I guess he's actually gonna give her time, which she's asked for multiple times, but nobody ever gives you any of. No, yeah. Um He's not going Roger, to Roger goes in and wants to talk to Frank, but he won't wake up. He's like, Wake up, Frank, Frank, I gotta talk to you. Um, Jill comes to visit, she has a flashback when they're in her and Frank are in bed together, they're eating an apple together. Weird. Talking about getting um, horses and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, and he mentions that Delia is maybe jealous of their own baby, which is interesting. Um, and he wants to leave her and marry Jill. Well, he does also think that Delilah is helpless, and Jill says Delilah isn't. i uh, sorry, Delia. Delia is. I was going to say, who the hell's Delilah? <laughs> just I spell it that way. I'm bad at spelling. <laughs> But she's, he's, she tells him that Delia isn't helpless. They see her that way and she likes it that they see her that way. So Jill says that they're, they're taking, she's taking advantage of that family by playing dumb. We find it, we find out much more about Delia in these episodes for sure. I'm like, mm-hmm. this girl, um, Faith and Pat talk. He says, Frank's a week. Um, they want he wants to go to Ryan's for coffee. I, I thought at first like he was hitting on her, but he's actually just trying to get her there for um Bucky. Mm-hmm. Um, but they have better chemistry, I feel like. I guess because she can be more real with him, like I guess she's known him, so she's comfortable with him. I, I think it's because they have no sexual interest in one another, so that makes Pat safe for Faith. Whereas, mm-hmm. like, there's so much pressure on the the Bucky situation, but with Pat, since he's not interested in her and she's not interested in him, they have more more chemistry because they're both relaxed around one another. Right. Um, a doctor comes in, talks uh, in to tell Frank that they're going to pull the trach today. Right. Um, so he might be able to talk. Um, he has some kind of swelling in the back of his head. I guess he hit his head. From the like, fall. Something. And it's yeah. Clem that comes in. Was it Clem? I thought it was another dude. That no, it was Clem. Know. I didn't see it was Clem. Um, and then, like, Frank's all smiling and stuff, and then Delia's brought up, and he's like, he does not smile any longer. Yeah. <laughs> um, Roger comes in. Jill rolls out. Um, he mentions the money. It was his, he paid Nick off. So I guess he had to, he paid, he gave Roger the money to pay Nick off. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like he got the money to help Roger pay off a debt, a gambling debt. It seems like a gambling debt. It it has that feel. Right. Um, I'm still not sure exactly what Nick 
does. He seems like an all right guy. <laughs> I feel like I feel like he might be he's like Sunny. Uh, I don't know. I know he's at least a bookie because of the way he has people go beat you up if you don't pay off your debts. That's very like a bookie. So I don't know if he's wonder, a mob guy or if he's just a bookie. And I wonder what the time frame is here. I know time on soaps is weird, but we're in September now of 1975. He's been in the hospital since July, and so has Nick. So I'm like, what's wrong with Nick that Nick doesn't even get out? Uh, he has a, a back injury. <laughs> um, so I guess they're just like... That's why they had him the They had him in traction at one point, and they, they had that triangle yeah, but, so he could lift himself up. Right, but now he can like roll into um, another room and stuff. So well, I don't okay. think Frank's be been there better. that long. I feel like it's only been like two weeks. It doesn't feel like it's it's been months of this because I don't know. The longer someone stays in a coma, the less likely they are to wake up. Isn't that what they say? Or right, I guess I don't know. I don't know. Time is weird in soaps. <laughs> so Pat and Faith get to Ryan's or Bucky is. Um, he's like, I'll leave if you want me to. She's like, no, you don't have to. Um, of course, he says he loves her right away. <laughs> so first off, I wrote in my notes that Pat's a little shit because he set this all up and it was so cute the way he got them all at the table together. But I kind of wish mm -hmm. they would just leave Faith alone. <laughs> but it was very awkward. It was an awkward hang. They won't. Nobody no. leaves anybody alone. In these no, you know that's this. true. Um. And basically, she doesn't know how to respond. She doesn't know what to say, as always. And that's it for all I got for that episode. Um, yeah. Yeah, basically, it was just they were all sitting around the table. And she just doesn't know how to respond because they want her to behave in a certain way. And she doesn't seem to be capable of doing that. And it's frustrating right. for both us and her and not for those boys. They don't seem to care. <laughs> yeah. Um, episode 40. Um Mary and Johnny are talking about um, Frank. Um, they're opening Frank's get well cards, I guess. Um, they Bob they call in. it his correspondence. So it's probably everything, all the. Oh, like the campaign stuff. The Maybe campaign stuff, well wishers, stuff. all that kind of stuff. Dude. <laughs> so ridiculous. We have a man. Um, Bob. He's a cat. <laughs> Bob comes in um, and says that the trach is out. Um, we have Nell at her empty apartment. Ed comes over with a little picnic basket. Um, being all cute. Yeah, he's, he's adorable. Like, he says, I think she's like, oh, well, I don't really have time to like go out. He's like, no, I thought we'd just have it here and stuff. So they have a little picnic in her apartment. It's cute. Um, but he also was trying to get into the bedroom. He's like, how about we move this picnic into the bedroom? I don't think he's, <laughs> I don't think he's really pushy. Like, I think he's more cute with it than, than but all he the men. Is. He is, but not like these other men. But he would bang her. You know this. Uh, all of these men would bang if given the option. <laughs> I know it seems like it. Yeah. Um, Nell says she's happy and that he has to do with that. Seneca gets a job from Marshall at the hospital. Delia is at the bar just like staring into space, um, yes. cleaning a glass, the same mm -hmm. glass over and over. Maeve, Johnny, and Mary, Bob talk about Frank and that he was pushed. Uh, or they think that he was pushed. They don't know for sure. Um... Jack comes in and interested in what Frank has to say. Um, now discusses her apartment and not being ready for a relationship. Um, Ed says he wants to get to know her better. He wants to spend as much time with her as he can. He's like, how about next time? Can you get some chairs? Like, have some chairs for us? So they get, you know, I thought he was really, really, really cute because um, was. she was, They're she cute. was, super honest and she said i'm not ready for a relationship after seneca and everything that happened with him i want to live life Don't to the fullest it. but i'm not ready for a right. relationship yet and ed was like okay well then get chairs and i'll be over again <laughs> and seneca shows up uh, seneca. <laughs> um bob is still concerned jack will write something bad about his boyfriend frank <laughs> <laughs> yeah Bob. agreed <laughs> Bob tells Jack to lay off Frank 
Um, and Frank says something like, are you sure? Oh, wait. It's, oh, wait, hold on. Oh, yeah. Is it, is it your interest in Mary, maybe, that is making you this angry? I feel like he likes Frank more than Mary. <laughs> That's just my opinion. Um, so it, it does really seem like they have a special relationship. Now, it may just be a really great platonic bromance, but sometimes mm -hmm. I want to. I wonder if everyone in town's in love with Frank, including her sis his sister. She seems a little too involved with Frank, to be honest. Right. Um, Delia goes to Frank, uh, wakes Frank, and he's like, hello, Delia. And that's it for that episode. So the only thing I want to comment on this one, because it was pretty much exactly what you said, is that mm -hmm. when they're talking about Frank at the, at the bar, when Maeve and Johnny and all them are talking, Delia drops that glass totally to distract them from the pushing conversation. So she, <laughs> she she's standing there looking like, like she's right. looking into the like camera into space. Right. And they're all behind mm -hmm. having this conversation. And when they get too into the, who was he pushed? She drops a glass and then she's like, Oh no. And then they all like <laughs> swarm her. And they're like, I think she cut her hand and they're all like, Oh, we need to take care of that. We need to take care of this. And she successfully diverted that entire conversation away from what was happening. And it's starting to make, like, give credence to what Jill said in the previous episode. Mm -hmm. So she, she's, I love, I love her. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's something. She's, yeah, she's something. Episode 41, um, Faith cries because she wants to love Bucky, but she can't. Because um, she's asexual or something. <laughs> or, <laughs> who knows? Um, Pat and Frank. Uh, we're hanging out. We get to meet Nancy Phelps. Yes. Um, she's a character. I like her hair. <laughs> yeah, she, she's interesting. Like, she just comes in, and uh, I think she's a counterpoint to Faith because she's kind of sexually liberated and, and calm and easygoing, and Faith just looks at her and is just like, I am not that. <laughs> right. Nell introduces Seneca and Ed. Um, they, she says uh, it's none of your business. You know, they. I think they had kissed right before he came in, just like a little peck. It wasn't anything big. Yeah, they were just. Um, it was like a meeting between friends. They had had the discussion, and Seneca comes pounding into the room, and he's just like, "This is my wife, and what are you doing with my wife, and what's going on with my wife?" And it's like every single word out of his mouth was like, "I own this person. Why are you anywhere near her?" <laughs> And I thought right. the cutest thing about the scene was that, did you notice that Ed and Nell's outfits matched? They, <laughs> they, they no, were like, didn't. they, they were both wearing the same color. Um, it was, funny. it was neat because they both had the same color shirts on. And I was like, oh, well, this is a nice cue to the audience on who you're supposed to um, be rooting for. And I just thought Seneca came off like an ass in this scene. Oh, he totally did. He always yeah. does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah um, but he basically tells her and him that he wants to be where she is. Um, Still like my wife. Ed, Still my wife. That's what he says. Ed says, Ed says it will be most stimulating having you on our staff. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he doesn't want to tell tried him. to escape that scene like four times and Nell wouldn't let him leave. And I was like, this poor man, it's so awkward. And he's just trying to dip. Yeah. <laughs> I like Ed. Yeah. Um Nancy. Oh, I have the Nancy is a urology RN, so we might see her again. I don't know. Okay. We didn't see her again after this episode. Um they they talk about going like on a double date to Bucky's houseboat. To go swimming. Um the Faith is acting weird, just looking at Nancy weird and being strange, as Faith usually is. And uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, Bucky and Faith boogie down. They go dance. Right. And it's <laughs> and awkward. Faith is like, and like Bucky's just getting down with his bad self. <laughs> um, Pat asks Nancy um, to dance with Bucky. She's like, yeah, sure. Why not? Um, Nell goes off on Seneca. Um 10 years, everything was all about you, you're selfish, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, he says he changed his life for her. I moved here for you. I got a job here for you, blah, blah, blah. 
again trying to get in the controlling situation. Well, she, he says he wants a second. It. Yeah, he says he wants a second chance, and she's she's like, "You're not getting one." And mm -hmm. instead of letting it go, because she keeps saying our relationship was was not equal, and it and it was all mm -hmm. about you, and I want life to be about me. And instead of taking yeah. that in as like a like a I don't know like a criticism that's correct, he just goes. There's something I don't know here. There's something I'm missing. And he's yeah, probably um, right, but at the same time... Yeah, we know he's right. Still, yeah, <laughs> you still suck. Yeah, she says it was hard for her to leave, and that's what he says. It's hard for him to figure out. He doesn't know what's going on with her. Why all of a sudden, after 10 years... Um, Faith tries to not be weird. Um, then Bucky and Nancy dance. Faith is very uncomfortable. As they watch them dance, which I was uncomfortable watching them watch them dance. Me too. <laughs> I was like, who, Me too. It was weird. Who? I mean, I, I closet watch people dance if I'm kind of fascinated, but I never like sit there and I'm like, just like watching two people. It's just strange. It was very weird. <laughs> the, whole, the whole atmosphere at Ryan's for this entire scene with all four of them, yeah. it just has this oddness to it. And I guess it's. It I keep thinking that like it has to be because they're showing Nancy as what Faith thinks she should be. Right. And that's why Faith just keeps watching Nancy. It's almost like if she were autistic, she would be studying Nancy as an example of how to mask and how to pretend to be like what people want her to be. So it's almost like yeah. a little robotic situation, you know, where she's yeah, studying. I am very Nancy. into this story because i'm i'm very fascinated <laughs> by what's going on with faith yeah um so bucky and faith leave and that's the end of that one right episode 42 mary and jack babysit the yeah. baby john little who cries non-stop he does not like either of them <laughs> okay i have to confess i just fast forwarded it i cannot sit and listen to a baby crying and i couldn't imagine that the conversation was all that interesting with a baby screaming it wasn't because um it's it's i said i put this baby hates them <laughs> they talk about being parents do you want kids it, that was all it was it was just kind of like a bonding moment for them um i get it um Delia apologizes for pushing Frank. So we find out already. I'm like, we're getting some comeuppance, or not comeuppance, but some rev revelations. Mm -hmm. um, and she begs them not to tell anyone. I was like, oh, so we're just going right there. I thought it was going to be another three months before we got anything. No, they, that was so amazing to just drop that mm -hmm. little piece of information like that. I really appreciated mm -hmm. that, actually. It was because it's still fascinating. Because it, it, it just is. Yeah, because it's like, why is this happening? What is the dynamic in this weird relationship? How does Jill right. fit in? Like, we're starting to right. get pieces. Very strange. And mm -hmm. yeah, we got a lot. Um, Bucky tells Faith, or takes Faith home. She doesn't get why she doesn't want, I mean, she doesn't get why he wants to be with her because she right. knows she's weird and can't figure things out. Um, Bucky tries to figure out why Faith got weird. She doesn't like being jealous, she says. Um, Bucky tries to teach her how to dance. It looks cute at first, but then she gets awkward and she's like, okay, let's stop. <laughs> I also think Over. it's like upsetting because she tries to get him to leave at first and he starts doing he starts doing everything he can to keep himself there. He asks her for food. He tries to get her to dance. And it's like, I don't know. It's like, I want it to be like a push me, pull me situation where like she wants him to be there. But a lot of times it just feels like he's pushing her boundaries. And I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. I think she does want him there. Cause she said it multiple times. Like she doesn't understand why. Cause even like when he was going to leave her earlier, he was going to leave. And she's like, no, don't leave like she wants to be around him i i, I don't really get it but whatever okay. well, hopefully and i hope it works know, itself out in just, some way i don't we'll understand just leave her um, alone so it, let her be fine <laughs> let her be on her own she's a good doctor but she, she he dead. was go he was going to leave her alone but she said no like she said today so no she no <laughs> whatever um anyway mary and zach are talking she's like Marriage won't restrict her and all this stuff. And Jack thinks otherwise. He's like, you're going to be restricted if you get married, blah, blah, blah. It'll well, change he doesn't want to get married. 
He doesn't want Mary's to get married at all. Thing. Right, but they're talking about that. Mm-hmm. Um, Bob comes along. They head to the hospital. Um, Delia and Frank again. Delia says he owes her. Um, don't tell anyone. What would your parents think? Trying to like, I guess. And not blackmail him exactly, because really can't. Well, she kind of is, though. She kind of is. is. She's threatening to ruin his reputation because if everything comes right. out while he's running for office, it could trash his entire campaign. So what she's saying is, you owe it to uh, to me to stay together with your kid. Um, yeah. And that's that's that. And Frank's and what kind would of your parents. Yeah, think Frank's kind of jail. trapped in that because he has these very religious parents, and right. he's in a campaign, and he was having an affair, like. And Frank says he doesn't know what he wants. <laughs> like multiple times. I mean, he, he just know. woke up like five minutes ago. Nobody's given him a minute to think before they're all demanding stuff from him. Right. He had the trach out That's for what, like, five whole minutes? I know. I know. He really shouldn't be able to. I mean, he's doing a good job of the way he's talking. Like he's holding back a little bit and like groggy, which is, you know, you would be with a trach mm-hmm. for sure. Um, episode 43. Mary and Bob uh, question Frank. Delia tries to stop them because she didn't get her answer. Like, are you going to tell them or not? Blah, blah, blah. Um, Frank says he doesn't remember anything and tells them what the $6,500 was for, which was confusing for me because Mary asked again later about that. And I thought we figured that out already. He said that the money came from basically his Roth IRA like that he had with the police department. It was part of his retirement package and he pulled the money out and then it was confusing. He pulled the money out to pay for something. So it was his own personal money. And that's why Delia doesn't know about it. And right. And, Delia and then they ask him. Said, yeah. And then they ask him again to clarify it later on. And he basically does the same song and dance. Cause Delia's like, we don't have that kind of money. He's like, well, I do. <laughs> you don't. Um, Maeve and Johnny talk about Delia being weak and Mary being strong. <laughs> Nonsense. Put strong, strong like ox. <laughs> <laughs> strong like um, bull. <laughs> <laughs> um, Joe comes by to discuss Frank and Jack being there. Jill says he is defensive. Um, Frank says he will keep quiet. Delia says Jill doesn't want to see him. And she will take care of him and all that jazz. She said she's going to be the best wife ever. Right. It feels very much like misery. Yeah. (laughs) Because he's trapped in the bed and she's like, I'll take care of you. And like, sure. I like when um, Maeve and Johnny came in and Frank like opens his eyes and scares them. That cracks me up. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, I'm here. (laughs) They're like, that's funny. Like, that's such a good son joke. (laughs) It was. It was. This, the, the writing's really good. I like all this stuff. Um, Delia and Jill talk. Delia feels hurt, and she hated her and Frank, that she says. Delia tells Jill it's over and to leave. Yep. Bob and Mary tell Jack. Frank doesn't remember. He asks about the money. Bob wants, gets mad and wants to hit him. But he doesn't. Mm-hmm. Jack says stop acting like she has a crush on her brother and she says get it she acts like she has a crush on her brother I'm sorry that was an accurate read on the scenario true. it is true uh, yeah I like Mary but I do agree with that <laughs> <laughs> um, Nick comes to see Frank he says not to mention the Roger connection and that he turned down the contribution. I guess he was trying to pay him off for something. Mm-hmm. Um, but he didn't accept it. Well, that was so the I... excuse they made. They For this, the story they told was that he went to meet... Because remember they said he met Nick. And they're like, what did you meet with Nick about? And he said that Nick offered him a campaign contribution and he turned it down. So now he's making sure that Nick's on board with this story. Because it's a lie. Yeah, well, Nick was making, I thought Nick was making sure Frank was on board with the story. They both they were both telling the same lie. Like that's what they're confirming with each other that they're telling the right lie. 
because he says that yeah, that's confused. probably for the best that they say that like i don't know remember so he was taking the money i don't know it the 6500 i think was to pay off a debt for roger right. so we know that but then they had a meeting together which is probably when he like when he found out that roger owed money and decided to pay it off but they can't say that they met about extortion so they had to make right, up right. another reason why they were meeting because Frank has to be on the up and up because he's running for office and can't be right, meeting right. with Nick. So like this is them just getting their bullshit story straight. And as they're talking about it, Mary comes in. Um, meanwhile, Ed and Nell discuss Seneca. Um, she says she's not going back to him and he thought that she was going to come back and be like, I am going to go back to him. So he's happy to hear that she doesn't want to go back to Seneca and she's free to be seeing him <laughs> is what they agreed to do. Yeah. They're so cute. I really like them together too. They're cute. They went from hating each other like to being like maybe we could be friends well, to like maybe we could see each other. But Nell came she, in so hot. She can't. That's what I was going to say. She came in hot and he went right back at her because he don't take that shit either and he and it just well she kind of des she deserved it though because she was being nasty to his staff and she that's did. his staff oh yeah for sure for sure um seneca and marshall talk he wants to know more about his co-workers we know where this is going he wants yeah, to know nosy. more about mm -hmm. <laughs> um Clem, this time clem came in i didn't think clem came in earlier but maybe i, I need to check that out again I thought I'm there was some sure random was, doctor. Um, usually I write it down if it's one of the doctors I know. You wrote it with Clem? I wrote Clem. I guess it had to be then. Because it didn't, it looked like a white man. So I was, <laughs> I was confused. <laughs> maybe there was an orderly before Clem came in. Or maybe, maybe there was another there was... doctor and I just didn't pay any attention. That's yeah, true. That could maybe happen. You were writing Clem as you missed the other guy. <laughs> yeah, the other guy comes in and then you right behind him. And I'm, I'm and I saw the other guy while I was writing. I'm literally something. writing my notes and I'm like, Delia, <laughs> da, 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 and this guy comes in. Oh. So Clem comes in and takes Nick, Nick out while Mary's there. Mary questions Frank about him. What's he doing here? He explains the money to Mary. Frank thinks he will have to drop out of the race because he ain't. Looking good, he ain't feeling good. It's already September. The race is what November. He's partially paralyzed at the moment. He doesn't know if he's yeah. going to recover, and he thinks it's too much. And Mary's like, "Nope, it you're is. running." Right. Wait, like, girl. Family. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> um, Seneca interrupts Ed and Nell once again. He wants to know about stuff now. Um, like everything, whatever. And he's like, "You're not really part of the staff yet." So until you are, I will tell you then. Right. Um, then we have these strange children just wandering throughout the hospital from the pediatric wing. <laughs> like, this would never happen. First of all, that ER looked like it was in a tunnel. I'm like, what is this <laughs> ER? It was like the basement of the studio. <laughs> it was the basement of the studio. It was horrible. There's like, yeah, it was terrible. And then there was this person there this nurse is trying to like revive someone with the breathing thing the breathing pump mm -hmm. and and there was no people in the waiting room i'm like what kind of er is this like an underground <laughs> shady it pump? didn't make any sense it didn't make very any sense. weird very they weird. should have had a couple of random people around like to make know. it make a little bit of sense i guess they didn't have the budget for that <laughs> anyway yeah right um shit Lost my spot. Is that when Mary Mary Ryan was trying to go meet with the nurse? Yeah, hold on. Yeah, that's what I said. So Mary comes in and she interrupts the nurse while pumping this person's mouth. <laughs> like, what is happening? Wait, this person this didn't never do happened. it. What's happening? <laughs> I don't know how it was in 1975, but I don't think it would have been, oh, maybe it was that easy to just walk into an ER and bug somebody, but it was just crazy things that would never happen unless it's just crazy. Yeah. Um, we have security and stuff now that stop you from doing these things. <laughs> and doors that lock that you need a combination for. So don't try it, people. <laughs> <laughs> Mary tells the kids to go back to Peds. She questions the nurse about the money. So the nurse comes out eventually. Um, and she 
doesn't. Wait. What the frick? Oh, she doesn't know anything. Why do I have? My, I think my notes are like out of whack. I think my notes are crazy on that episode because once the children started showing up and wandering around and trying to meet that famous person, that would have and... never happened. Those ER, those kids walked in the ER, and yeah, it was just insane. Yeah, I wrote a W two T F like as soon as the kids showed up, and then they were like they'd escaped from their ward and they were wandering around, and then they meet that guy that was. Um, a sports guy, I think. Yeah, yeah, I have I have notes on him, but I I think does that happen now? No, yeah, first first they they are outside the ER and Mary Ryan sees them, and then she kind of tells them she won't well, tell anyone she sees them. After she questions the nurse, though, mm -hmm. the nurse didn't know anything. She goes back in, and then that happens right away, right? She comes out from talking to the nurse, and the children are hiding down the hallway and she tells them she won't oh. she won't tell anyone that they're roaming around and then that right. guy is waiting somewhere with a magazine and i was like what is happening i don't understand anything yeah happening. so it's it's nolan ryan um okay. is and a baseball is he? player All right. he comes in um and mary and the kids like peek over because they see he's a famous baseball player so some facts about nolan ryan number one he's still alive he's 77 years old good for him um, he's married He's been married to the same woman since 1967. They have three kids. He retired right. in 1993. Um, he was a big pitcher. He's like huge. I remember hearing about him in the 80s and 90s. I heard the name before. So I was like, okay. So it's random that he would show up on Ryan Soap. I'm like, okay. I don't know why. I guess, is that like a promotion thing maybe they did back then? I do remember there were a lot of sports people on, like, I remember like, was it? I think Muhammad Ali was on different strokes. Like they would be like random, yeah, and like, um, sports wasn't people and Ditka so. on MacGyver. Yeah, there was even like a Six Million Dollar Man episode that had a bunch of wrestlers in it. Like I think, it, and even some, there was a Wonder Woman episode with some football players in it too. So there's, they must have just did that back then for fun. It's <laughs> like sports people to be in shows. Um. So anyway, um. Yeah, he was a pitcher on the Mets. He got traded to the Angels. He worked on the Astros and Texas Rangers. And his career was 27 years long, which is, I wow. think, a long time for Well, baseball's yeah, for baseball. longer. Yeah, baseball's longer because for pitchers and stuff. I but think. that's what I was going to say, though, for pitching that long, because I think your arm goes out after a certain time if you pitch and he's one of the best pitchers i am not knowledgeable ever. i think i think baseball is yeah, a longer crazy. career because it's a little less harsh on the body because like football destroys you and hockey destroys I, you i figured pitching would too because of the way they you know like i, th I think you're right like i think if you if you get into a certain scenario like you can tear a rotator cuff and then you're done. right right I mean, um, he could have know. had some injuries. I don't know enough times. about sports to really <laughs> say anything. I'm not yeah. a sports really. So anyway, yeah, he hangs around for a few episodes. It's weird. Um, it's like it just feels like it, came, it just feels like it came out of nowhere, too. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Whatever. Um, I think so I got annoyed 45. and stopped taking notes because of that. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Yeah, it was just strange. Um... I guess it was supposed to be another thing between um, Jack and Mary, I'm guessing. Um, their little relationship going on here. Um, so Frank dreams of falling again. Um, and then he like wakes up and he's like commanding his foot to move because, you know, he can't move yet. Jill sneaks in to see him. Uh, they talk about Delia, all that stuff. And they want to be together, but they can't. And I don't know. I don't know what's happening with them. Um, well, Frank has decided to stay with Delia, so he has to break it off with Jill. Yeah, but he doesn't. I feel like I they. I feel like they didn't. didn't. No, they didn't. Which we get to in a minute with Delia. Um, the kids stare at Nolan Ryan. Mary asks him if it's him, and he's like, "Shh." I'm like, "There's nobody there." <laughs> First of all, no one in sight. Like, what? What is? <laughs> Made no sense. I'm like, whatever. This is so strange. All right, I stopped paying attention as soon as like they started the kids. I was like, this this isn't going to be important to the storyline at all. I don't care. I, it is for Jack and Mary. I think. I think that's what I'm getting from it anyway. Um, 
Mary and Pat want to sneak Nolan out and get him into the lounge so he's out of sight of people, which there's no people around anyway, so it doesn't matter. It's like Jack a ends up green coming. Room. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jack can, ends up popping up, and you know, I guess they got to distract him from him because Jack's a reporter. Um, Jill says that she will do what Delia asked, and then they basically say that they love each other, and Delia walks in. <laughs> so weird. Um, Mary distracts Jack. Um, he apologizes, not for what he said, though, but for something else, right? I forget. He said, I apologize, but not, I forget how he worded it. Not for saying the one thing, but for the other two things, like for, for the way she took it, <laughs> which is not an apology. an apology. No, <laughs> that's, that's the classic. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. Right. Like it's, it's taking zero responsibility for anything in this scenario. And then she tells, she explains exactly what the money was for, what Frank had said anyway, which whatever. Um, Jack and the kids, in the meantime, cover Nolan. They get on the elevator, they sneak away, and they leave Jack in the wherever the hell they're at in the weird ER underground. Um, Jill, Jill and Delia go at it a little bit. Um, Jill ends up leaving. Um, Delia says, like, she wanted to be cared for, and he's like, Frank won't tell if she doesn't tell about him and Jill. So they're blackmailing also, each other. Did you say to her <laughs> that she bored the marriage to death? Um, was it him that said that? I don't know. I, don't, I have notes. It's like you bored it to death. And then my last note is how can anybody be that mean? <laughs> I thought Jill I thought Jill said that. Oh, Jill remember, said that to, Jill said that to Delia. Jill and said I, it. Because yeah. then Jill walked out and she's like, that's so mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry once those kids know. showed up i was just like over it i w i can't stand i i know it's cute and people love that stuff but i can't stand it um i liked parts of it but for me they shouldn't have gone in that er like that would have never have happened just like them walking in the er rant walking that even mary going in it just wouldn't have happened like yeah, it's sometimes, crazy me. sometimes things like that break break the suspended disbelief of watching television because you're just right. like that can't happen in real life and there's no real there's no explanation enough to right. make me believe that that would happen like there should have been someone at a desk and been like man like they'll get to you when they can because they're saving a life right now and you're not only literally that, going it it doesn't make sense not only that like doesn't that break the sterility of like things around like this random person walking into like where they're doing procedure if they were doing a procedure <laughs> like and also uh, like with the kids like do you want the kids in the er where like people routinely come in bloodied and stabbed and shot in mm -hmm. car accidents and you're gonna just let the children wander in there a lot of times in the er all bets are off they do whatever they got to do. I'm serious. They do whatever they got to do to save people. They got to so keep they, alive. Like, yeah. So, so that happen. seems like it would be even <laughs> worse location for the children to just go wandering around nearby. Right? And that's another, like, that per whoever is in charge of peds should be fired <laughs> immediately Absolutely. for letting three children Three children, children are missing. They're missing <laughs> from their rooms. No one's looking for them. But I have a feeling that this used to be a trend when they would have, like, uh, doctor shows and they'd have cute little kids like escape from pediatrics all the time because they were bored or whatever it, as a, like a, a thing. Hmm. But I, I don't know. Like, yeah, like on the, you know, like St. Elsewhere or something. I don't know if it's specifically that. Uh, one, but... Yeah, you've, you have seen St. Elsewhere, so you would probably know. I don't know. <laughs> so I don't know if it did happen. Although, if you're watching St. Elsewhere, you should be watching it for Denzel Washington. <laughs> well, on Hulu, I think. <laughs> where it was it's, it's sad don't watch it if you're if you're having problems with depression <laughs> it's oh, very God. sad it's so sad sometimes <laughs> you don't watch the first joker either that's very depressing <laughs> oh god oh, um, sometimes i just want to have fun and that's why i'm watching ryan's hope instead <laughs> <laughs> episode 46 um this one aired September 6th, 1975. I had to look up because I was curious at where we were, <laughs> what, what month we were in. Um, Delia goes to confession. 
to tell her sins. <laughs> Maeve is upset that Mary couldn't get Nolan Ryan to the bar. She's like, oh, you should have tried to do that, whatever. She's like, I was trying to help him out. And he ends up coming to the bar and he brings an autographed picture and they want to hang it up and all that jazz. Johnny is trying to figure out how he is related to Nolan Ryan, which cracked me up. Um, Jack comes in and Nolan leaves. Jack's like, who's that guy? He looks familiar, but they <laughs> marry messes with him. I won't tell you, whatever. Um, Seneca is waiting for Nell when she gets to her office. She wants him to go away, as usual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says, I, I know something's wrong with you. What's up? Um, Delia said she married Frank to hurt Pat. She's telling this priest everything. I'm wondering if this priest is going to be like her evil confidant. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Because um, that's fun. Everyone and needs I, an I evil confidant. That. Yeah, and it's Even not... It's not like at the bar where everyone can hear what she's saying. It's in a confessional. It's actually the smartest place to go because that priest can't tell anybody anything. That was a weird confessional because it's like you can see through the bars, the person. It depends. Some 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 do face to face and some do different like setups for the I mean, the ones we had when we were a kid, you couldn't you could barely see the priest. It was just like a mesh screen and you were in a creepy dark box. So on TV, it's more fun if you can see. I don't know what to believe out of Delia. <laughs> I, I don't. I just don't know. So anyway, she says she loves Frank, um, and she had to. She had the baby to end Frank and Joe's affair. After she had was taken pills to get rid of a baby, not get rid of a baby, but not prevent able to have a baby, yeah. prevent a baby. Um. And then she, she admits she, she followed Frank and all that stuff and everything. Um, he was going to leave her after the election. That's what they were fighting about in the stairwell, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, and he turned around and she pushed them. Well, that, um, I mean, that was stupid. Why would you argue like that in and in, like have a fraught argument right near the top of the stairs? But so you're just asking for trouble. I, uh, you know... <laughs> I guess he didn't think that would happen because like, I feel like you really got to trust people to fight on stairs. Yeah. Right. Like he, so just, he probably just didn't think she would ever do that. Act. Maybe she didn't, maybe he didn't know that she ba tried to baby trap him. Maybe she didn't like, he didn't know any of that. So he just thinks that she's innocent. Like everyone keeps telling him. And maybe yeah, we don't know. We still need to know more. Because we only know basically her side, so we don't know his. She sure is a Jerome in that uh, scenario. <laughs> <laughs> Even though she's it's her mother. She's Ava Jerome's mother. She is Ava Jerome's mother, GH Watchers. If you remember, because she hasn't been on for a few years or maybe mm -hmm. like six years. Um, Priest says, make everything easy for them. He does a really good confession. I used to get like 10 Hail Marys and shit. She got three different pairs, and that's it. <laughs> I'm like, for you push someone down the steps, dude. Yeah, seriously. I like, didn't do my homework. That's not, <laughs> you didn't even get a novena. Her. You're doing just three Hail Marys and an Our Father, and you're out. Come on. Right. Catholic. And then just drama. be. <laughs> and then just be nice, and just be nice to everyone. Basically, is what he said. You think, sometimes I think in these scenarios that the priest is not listening. Like he's just like, okay say some prayers he's like got a <laughs> transistor radio and he's listening to the baseball game <laughs> she's confessing to basically trying to murder her husband and the priest is like say a prayer have a great day <laughs> a good one. did you hear it like at all sir <laughs> um mary and jack uh talk out their issues um and he wants to talk to frank and she's like I think she, like he ends up leaving and Johnny's like doesn't trust them and Mary's like I have to trust them. Like I think she's just into him and um she just wants to trust Jack. She just likes him. I don't think there's any reason not to trust Jack ex to no. tell to tell the truth. Jack is going she's to being tell honest the truth with yeah. her. And she's being honest with him. I, I like 
I like their relationship so far. Yeah, so far they're they're trying to be as honest as possible with each other. And I think that's one of the problems is that Jack isn't going to lie about Frank. If he digs up dirt, he's right. going to publish it. And she seems to think that because they have this friendship that he won't. And he's told yeah. her multiple times that he will. So that's on her. So Delia comes into Ryan's when uh, she's done at the priest and she's all excited and happy and <laughs> she feels good and she looks good. She doesn't look concerned anymore and worried and everything. Well, she said those three Hail Marys. Land. She's done. <laughs> <laughs> Freedom. Um, and she's like, I'll be a good wife and blah, blah, blah. And then Mary and Jack leave for the hospital and that's all I got. See, these are really good episodes. Um, I was really hooked into them. I watched, I think, like six in a row, like right away. And I was like, it was really good. I don't know. I thought that was like a weird beginning with like Bucky and Faith. Um, I think they're always weird for me. Like I, I just, they like are. you said, it's confusing. I don't know how to react. Sometimes it seems like he's in her space when he shouldn't be. Sometimes it feels like she doesn't want him there. And then she pulls him back and it's really hard to decide how I feel about them as a couple. I, I can't really get on board. So that was yeah, a little I mean, frustrating. It's, a couple. it's still too early to know who we even want as couples, I feel like. They, right. I actually only really am into Jack and Mary. Um, to be uh, honest like with you, chemistry. I'm into Ed and Nell. I don't really like... Ed and Nell, too. Ed and Nell, too. I'm not I into like Mary too. Ryan at all as a, as a character yet. I don't really like her. Um, I, I don't like Ryan's. Um, I think I think you know, Jack is know. a good guy. I know, <laughs> but I don't like Ryan's. I think Pat is probably uh, my favorite Ryan now because he at least is trying to help help his friend out, and he seems to care about his brother a lot. And he does the right thing by like when Delia was like trying to like hug all up on him, he like got out of there fast. We so we didn't get the other two Ryan sisters yet. So I wonder. No, not Siobhan or is it Siobhan and Catherine? Something like that. Siobhan and you know, something like that. Kathleen. I don't know. Yeah, Irish names. Just lots and lots of Irish names. Hopefully um, they come along soon. Um, but I guess there is a lot going on. So we don't really. Frank being awake, though, has really mm -hmm. helped. Like, Frank, mm -hmm. now we're starting to get answers for stuff we've been waiting for for episodes and upon episodes upon episodes we're starting it <laughs> now and then they were like oh by the way um delia did push him down the stairs and here's her confessing to it and i was like oh my god yeah. we had nothing for like a month and now it's like I here's know. a little so it was that was very exciting that's good writing because i feel yeah. like it doesn't you don't expect it i didn't see it coming like it was just there and i'm just like what i'm like oh and that's why I was so hooked. I'm like, more, I need more, I need more. I was really <laughs> hooked. I'm really hooked on the Nell and Seneca Ed storyline because we we don't have enough yeah. information yet. But we Seneca, don't. Seneca is, oh, Seneca. So I need more me. out of that because I, see, I feel like we're getting too much of the same conversations between mm -hmm. Seneca and her. Like, it's been the same every yeah, time. Yeah, but I don't, I think each time it happens... It's like a push for her and Ed because it's like every time Seneca shows up and acts like a jerk, Nell gets more comfortable pushing towards a relationship with Ed because yeah. I, she, he's just like digging the grave for that relationship and he's been doing it for a long time. But I love right. the idea of him coming to the hospital and causing problems for both Ed and Nell. I think that's building towards something that's going to be a lot more interesting, a lot more fun. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I need more from Seneca um, besides just his one note right now. <laughs> his one note. You're my wife. I own you. And you should do what I want you to do as my wife. And she's like, bro, we're getting divorced. <laughs> and he's like, no. <laughs> Where I feel like with uh, like I feel like Faith and Delia are killing it. And even Jill. Like, I'm very interested in all of them. Um, Jill, Jill is growing on they me. They all bring it. Yeah, Jill, Jill is growing it. on me because like it's hard for me to get into a character that's basically somebody's side piece. That's like always a weird position to be in. Well, you don't but know how it came along. You I don't, don't know how it came about. I don't. And now I'm getting invested in finding out how it came about. Although the flashbacks are always ridiculous on the show. It's, it's <laughs> just they, they're just oddly like odd choices. And I'm sure they'll like gel later as you get more information but usually it's just like here's a random scene and people were eating <laughs> apples and you're just like why are they always eating apples like it seemed like 
Bob and and Frank are like eating food together and having drinks and looking really romantic. And then Jill and, and Frank are in bed together looking really romantic. And I'm just like, Frank, you dog. <laughs> you <know? Yeah>, right. <laughs> He's out there. Um, it, it was a good showing this time around. I could have done without yeah. without the um baseball player storyline. I I felt like that's fun for some people and for other people, it just is a distraction from the storylines that I'm interested in. So I didn't particularly right. enjoy that, but I could see how other people would. Yeah, I was fine with it, except for the unrealistic stuff with the ER. I just can't. <laughs> like, and there was no people. Like, where are the people? Mm -hmm. It made no sense. Like, I, like it just didn't make sense. Like, have also, two other people there. Just stop so can... showing the baby screaming. Like, stop it. Yeah, stop. that's a mistake. And how you know what though the actors earned their paychecks that day because i don't know I, how you i would have been like lines. take this baby and give me the quiet twin or i'm out of here i'm not acting <laughs> with this child I actually, screaming i actually thought i'm like they probably don't have a twin for that and i it just didn't make sense either why the baby would cry so i don't know they must not have had a twin <laughs> i don't know what they were trying to do with it though like i get they were trying to show a domestic scene but it just seemed like they yeah. made it the most miserable domestic scene ever, which kind of emphasized they, Jack's point about bonding, like a woman being binded if she gets married. So I don't, I don't know. But I couldn't pay attention well, to the yeah. dialogue because the baby was screaming, and I just ended up fast forwarding it. Well, yeah, it was just basically, yeah, like just them, you know, like talking about family and kids and stuff, um, just to get, you know, just getting to know each other basically. But it just didn't make sense because it was. Like they didn't have to have a screaming baby there to have that conversation, so I don't I don't know. I was confused. Maybe time was short and they just needed to get it done, and they had no twin. That's it just, yeah, it then no other like, baby. Then do the scene with a a baby doll. Put the put the baby in a blanket. Right. Do it with a doll. Put the baby down immediately. Like, here's a good good idea. They should have had like maybe him. He was I think he was might have been holding the baby or something, and like. Then, like, Mary could have picked up the baby and then, like, switch it with a doll so it would shut up. <laughs> they mm -hmm. could actually conversate, you know, just to, yeah. but, like, it just looked like that baby didn't want to be there. Didn't know them. Because <laughs> like, mm -hmm. it looked like it was looking off to the side, like, maybe at their mom. And, like, it just Well, they always are. Awkward. Like, it's, it, to me, it's, it's, I don't know. I almost wish they would just CGI babies in because it feel, feels like you're being cruel to the baby. 75, Karen. They don't even know what CGI That's is. That's what a baby doll is <laughs> for, Eric. Um, All right. Well, we got to wrap this up this week. Um, so we'll wrap up Brian's Hope. We'll bring you some more soon. Um, we're halfway through. Well, what are we through? I'm not even. We started halfway through the year in 75, I think. So halfway through that half. <laughs> Um, thanks for joining us at Careers and Soaps. Follow us on all the socials, subscribe, like, and comment. Um, did you watch Ryan's Hope? We would like to know. Um, I don't think we've ever talked to anybody that has watched Ryan's Hope yet. I don't think anybody's commented on it. Give us your opinions um, on Delia because we love her. Give us your opinions on anyone. We would love to yeah. know what you think. Um, have a good, good day, everyone. Bye.